I'm Chris Fox, and this is The Bourbonite. Some of you may remember, a few weeks ago, I made an attempt to uh, age my own whiskey. And, uh... It's about time that we give this stuff a go. Throughout the last few weeks, um, I've, uh, we've seen some fluctuating temperatures where I live, and uh, I've moved the casks in and out of outside. So as I've been told, that simulates uh, essentially a year of weather. Um, when you move it outside, the, the cask changes and fluctuates with, uh, with expanding and contracting with the different temperatures and different uh, humidity and all that fun stuff. So moving it in and out makes it feel like the cask is going through a summer and winter flux. Now, I'm in Wisconsin, not in Kentucky, so winter's a little different here. Uh, it, it gets a little wild. Uh, sometimes it's, it's super warm and, I mean, warm to us is, you know, 35 degrees during the winter. And sometimes it gets really cold, negative 10, something like that. So these things have seen some serious fluctuation. So I, I guess at this point we'll, we'll give it a spin. We'll uh, we'll see if it turned out. Um, I put together two different casks here. One I used a, uh, a a white dog whiskey. It's essentially just a corn whiskey uh, from a local distiller. Um, so white dog means it was clear, uh, at least as far as I understand the term. It means it's just it's an unaged whiskey. And then the other one is the uh, the bottle of Templeton rye that I had sitting around. I thought I wanted to give rye a, a, an aging process and see what, the, what that turned into. We'll, uh, we'll give it a go and let's see, uh, let, let, let's see if this turned out. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's hot. Um, whew, yeah, that white dog whiskey was not. Uh, I think that stuff was only like forty percent. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, I guess the the, the lightning is uh, one hundred and ten proof. So I, I guess that makes sense. It's it's a little. It's a hotter. Uh, it's a hotter whiskey on its own. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, there's definitely some, uh, there's definitely some aging. I, there's a lot of oak in there. Um, but, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe it's the, the, it's the type of, of whiskey that I used to start with. Maybe it's just I didn't leave it in there long enough. I'm not really sure because it's still got, um, it's got a lot of the bite without a lot of payoff, at least at this point. Maybe we'll just stick it back on the shelf a little bit longer, maybe move it in and out of the uh, winter weather a few more times and maybe give it a go there. What is really cool is, like I said, you can taste a lot of the oak. These, uh, what's really cool about these is that they are legitimate. You know, the, the inside is charred, um, just like an actual whiskey cask. Um, I don't know for sure, you know, where the oak actually came from, if it's American oak or if it's from somewhere else, it's really hard to say, but um, yeah, you know, it's it's not it's not bad, it's not great, but maybe we'll let this stuff sit around for a little while and uh, take a few samples every now and again. Let's see what it did to the rye. This one I'm quite curious about because it definitely got darker. Um, I mean, rightfully so, it sat in a charred cask for a while, but the uh, the Templeton's not uh, it, it's. It's not an amazing rye, but it's not bad. I like it. Um, we'll see. We'll see if this tastes like a million dollar rye after sitting in a weathered cask for some time. The rye definitely tastes 
less like a rye. It's still got a little bit of the spice in there, but this stuff now, I mean, it, uh, I mean, Basil Hayden's has more of a, more of a spice to it than this rye does now. Um, it's interesting though, it's, 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 it's not bad. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of it for sure. It, it's smoother than it, than the, the original Templeton rye. And it's, uh, it, the oakiness is there, but it's not nearly as present as it is in the, uh, the, the white lightning stuff. There's definitely a difference. It's definitely a new whiskey at this point. The spice has gone sweet. Maybe that's the right way to say it. It's closer to being a bourbon, in, in at least to my amateur palate. I guess uh, this experiment has been a success to some degree. Um, I'm gonna definitely let the uh, let the just the standard white whiskey sit a bit longer. Definitely gonna look some stuff up online. Um, if any of you have any other ways to maybe manipulate uh, what happens in this cask, I'm open to it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it, it changes a little bit more. Maybe it gets better. Maybe it doesn't. So if you like what you've seen. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up because there's plenty more whiskey, aging, and just general experiments to come. I mean, side by side? Yeah. The rye is a little more, a little lighter. Actually, it does smell really good. Maybe I'll stick it back in the cask. We'll, we'll let it age a little bit. Well, not stick it back in. Yeah. I'm going to look some stuff up online. Maybe if any of you have any recommendations as to other ways to pin it.